Let's talk to the man who was behind all of that, the great George Lockhart, kind enough to join us right now. George, how are you? Hey, what's going on, Harry? It's good, uh, good to be on the show, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's great to talk to you again, and congratulations to you and the team on the victory on Saturday. And so let me ask you, how did you get hooked up with Tyson Fury? How did this all start for you? Honestly, so I was working with Badu Jack, and um, everything went really well. And uh, one of his managers, so I'll, Frank Shea and uh, Amir Abdallah, they, uh, you know, they uh, see what I did with Badu, and, and uh, Tyson was looking for basically a food prep company. And they were like, no, 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 you need, you need a nutritionist. Um, and they basically sent, him, you know, sent me out there, and I think he was kind of skeptical, but uh, after everything went down, he, uh, he became a believer. Why do you think that he was skeptical initially? Uh, you know, he's, he's old school. You know, he's kind of like, you know, you eat whatever you want. You have the right mentality. If you're tough, you know, you, you drive through, you push through, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get the results. Um, honestly, like after the first couple of weeks, he was like, wow, I am, uh, I'm recovering a lot faster. I feel a lot better. And uh, then when he started seeing the physical differences, like, Man, I'm I'm the same weight, but I look completely different. Um, it was it, you know after that it was just kind of like a, a chain of events. You know I would wake you know every morning he wake up I would tell him what weight he was gonna be. be like hey tomorrow you're gonna be this weight tomorrow you're gonna be this weight. He's like holy crap you're like right on the money. Huh. Uh, we we had a running joke because he wanted to be a specific weight uh, the day of the fight, and uh, he woke up he's like George. <laughs> I wasn't that weight, and I, I was basically I was point four out or off. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he, he's like George, yeah, yeah. I, he was he was joking with me. He's like George, uh, you went right, you know. And I was like, oh come on, man. I'm like drink some water because I was I was basically uh, point four under. But uh, no, it went really well, and uh, it, it was an honor to work with him. The guy and the team were awesome. And, and so, did you live with him? Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 well, I lived in the house right behind him. So okay. you know, um, I was there from the moment he woke up to the moment he went to bed. And uh, man, he was awesome. He was, uh, it was an adventure. I guess this was the biggest camp that I've ever been a part of. And when I say the biggest camp, I mean not necessarily the amount of people or anything like that, but the size of them. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Like usually, I'm. I mean, I'm 230 pounds, so I'm like the big guy. Uh, in his camp, I was a munchkin. I was like a man baby walking around, man. I was like, oh my god! Like his brother is bigger than he is, and he's six nine, two hundred. You know, when I showed up, he was two hundred and seventy five pounds. Um, I was like, wow! I've never felt so small in my life. Do you recall how much he weighed when you first started working with him? Yeah, he was he was two uh, two seventy five when I first started working with him. Oh wow! Okay, so n nothing really changed as far as how much he weighed in the end, but a lot changed, right? Oh, a hundred percent. So you know, we actually went down to two hundred and sixty pounds. It was like there was a couple of things that 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 uh, changed over the course of the camp. Like uh, he went down to two sixty, and then uh, I you know I talked to uh, Sugar Hill and I you know communicated with him quite a bit. And I was like, you know, how's he doing? He's like, you know, this is the way that he needs to be. Uh, this is what I saw him, you know, sparring uh, at his best. I'm like, done deal. Then I talked to Tyson. I'm like, when did you feel your best? Um, and then it, it, it was funny because the weight kept changing, like uh, basically like, okay, I want to be this weight. Then I want to be this weight. But we kind of honed in on it. And then obviously the day of the fight, he was exactly where he wanted to be, where the coach wanted him to be. And, um, and then he went out and performed. <laughs> Are you able to tell us how much he weighed on Saturday night? Yeah, so Saturday night he was about two hundred. I mean, <laughs> this is funny. He's about two hundred. He was exactly what he started up with uh, when we started working. Almost exactly. Um, what was that? Two seventy-five. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's funny. It's like, okay, what did you actually do, George? But. <laughs> um, <laughs> the amount of you know, we like I said, we went down like. Uh, the first couple of weeks, um, you know, I wanted to do it very slowly. And, I, you know, I, I think the first couple of weeks, he, he, he wasn't frustrated. You know, he, he was, he, you know, obviously, you know, you know, Tyson, super cool guy and everything. But you tell, like, he was, he'd be like, dude, I usually lose, like, seven pounds in a week. And, um, I, you know, 
I'm, I'm trying to tell them, like, if you lose, like, a lot of people don't realize when you lose weight, you actually lose more muscle than you do fat. The slower you do it, uh, the less muscle you actually lose. So he comes down every single fight. He loses every single fight. But this time it was like, okay, this time we're going to hold on to as much muscle as possible and, and try and, and uh, you know, minimize the amount of muscle loss and, and maximize the amount of uh, fat loss that, that happened, you know, obviously keeping performance first. And uh, I think, you know, I think a lot of people realized when, when he walked into the cage, like he literally was, he was bigger, but he was actually a lot leaner. See, this is how I know that you're an MMA guy at heart. You just said he, uh, when he walked into the cage, as opposed to the ring, it's hard oh. to change those little <laughs> things, right? <laughs> Bro. I'm telling you so much. Ariel. Like I'm, I'm, um, we're getting into the, the boxing game. And there's so many things that I say, and I'm, I'm like, oh, crap, my bad, bro. I'm, you know, um, when we first started working with Triple G, Ariel, this is embarrassing. This is, I mean, this is so bad. Like, uh, uh, when Triple, Triple G called us up, and, uh, you know, I called Dan, um, my business partner, and I was like, hey, Dan, I'm like, dude, you know, Triple G called us up. Like, Do you know who this guy is? <laughs> what? And, uh, yeah, he's like, are you fucking kidding me, George? Like, you don't know who Triple G is? And I'm like, oh, hey, go down now. You know, I'm like, oh man, dude. I'm like, oh man, I'm um, sorry, bro. Uh, you know. And then after I started working with him, I'm like, oh my god, this is embarrassing. Like he's one of the greatest boxers of all time, you know. And uh, yeah, so I'm learning slowly but surely who people are. Like after I started working with Triple G, I, you know, I watched the uh, the Anthony Joshua fight when he fought Andy Ruiz for the first time. Um, you know, they're like, no, Anthony Josh was amazing. He's he's amazing. He's amazing. And then, and then uh, Andy Reese beat him. And I'm like, okay, wait, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm learning slowly, but surely. In terms of mentality, in terms of structure, just like, you know, th there are definite things as a fan that I see that are different in terms of boxing uh, versus MMA. But as someone who's like working with these guys, do you, do you sense a difference between working with boxers and MMA fighters? Is there a big difference that, that comes to mind? No, you know, honestly, um, working with Tyson was a lot very similar to working with Connor. Um, and when I say like their, their mentality, um, it is one of those things where like I knew he was going to win. And, and when I say I know somebody's going to win, I'm like, oh, you know, their mindset's right, their camp is perfect. You know, we, we both know that anything can happen on any given day in a fight, you know, anything could happen. But I'm like, there's nothing that this individual could possibly do um, to, you know, do better to win this fight. And it, it's funny because, like, a lot of people, they'll have, like, a bad day of sparring, and they're going to – they'll come back and they'll be like, my nutrition was off. George, you're like, I don't think you gave me enough carbs or this or that. And Tyson never has an excuse. Same thing with Connor. You know, it's like a lot of people try and get into the right mindset, whereas – Connor and Tyson, they don't have to get the right mindset. It's just innate in them. You know, they just constantly think that way. You know, it's, it's the craziest thing in the world. Um, you know, as a fighter myself, like I was always trying to be like, okay, you know, I got to, you know, prep myself. Like, okay, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get ready for a fight. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to think this way. Whereas they just innately do that. And I saw that with Tyson and, you know, I was like, well, a lot of people, um, they're like, oh, I'm not, I don't get nervous for the fight. Almost everybody says that, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, but I mean, before my fight, I used to get nervous. I used to get yeah. nervous as hell. And, um, it, it wasn't, you know, I always said that there's a difference between scared and nervous. Nervous says like, all right, I know what I'm, I'm willing to go through to, to win this fight and it's going to suck. Um, but I, you know, I, you know, I see Tyson every time he used to spar, every time he'd go to, you know, training or anything like that. He just loves being in the, in the ring. He loves it. Like he thrives on that. Same thing with Connor, you know, like Connor loved it, you know, and, and when people were watching, if people were watching me spar, I, you know, I, my, my, my thought process would kind of, kind of, you know, go away and stuff you like that. Now? Whereas they, they would, they would actually do better. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's the same thing with Tyson. You know, I remember um, a few weeks ago when you were going out to Las Vegas, you posted a picture on Instagram of your uh, your ticket, and you're like, "Oh, guess where I'm going?" And and I think a lot of people thought 
oh, you're going back to work with Connor because it was around the time of his fight, but in the end, it was with Tyson Fury. How come you did not work with Connor for this fight? Was it because you committed to Tyson beforehand? Uh, no, no, no. You know, like, obviously, I have a great relationship with Connor, and, um, you know, I, I'm very loyal to people that have been good to me. You know, um, I've, there's, there's no doubt about it that my success, a lot of it, you know, has, has dealt with Connor because of Connor's uh, rise and stuff like that. So I'll always, anytime, you know, Connor calls me up, he's like, hey, George, I need you. I'm there in a heartbeat. But we had a guy, uh, Tristan Kennedy, one of the guys that had went through our certification. Um, not only did he go through our certification, but the guy's actually got degrees in nutrition. He's got, you know, in, in Ireland, there's two different degrees that you can get, and he's got both of them. Um, and I mean, he have worked together for a long period of time. So he was out for, for Connor. So I knew Connor was taken care of. And, and then, uh, that gave me the ability to come out and, and work with Tyson. So, okay. um, obviously Connor wasn't cut weight or anything like that, but if Connor goes to, you know, when Connor goes to 155 again, I'll, I'll definitely be out there for it. Okay. Um, for a guy like Tyson, as big as he is, as, as athletic as he is, could you tell us like how many calories does he consume a day in the midst of camp? Man, honestly, so Ariel, when I first started working with him, um, I was like, okay, how much am I going to have to feed this guy? Because <laughs> <you know, laughs> it's, it's insane. You know, when I first met him, I didn't realize the size of this guy. There's a picture that I posted on Instagram um, that I'm right next to him. I'm again, I'm 230 pounds. I'm, I'm I'm not a little guy, but when I took the picture next to him, I'm like, this guy is massive, man. He's humongous. <laughs> Um, so I started feeding him and, uh, you know, he, 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 he just, he's not a guy that's like, Hey, what am I eating? What am I eating again? What am I eating again? He, he's not like that at all. Um, and it, it's hilarious because when I showed up, he's like, Hey, I got a guy that I'm training with that's fighting on the same card. Uh, can you help him out? I'm like, yeah. And I'm expecting another like heavyweight. And it, it was Isaac Lowe, who is, a, a fighter that's at 126. Hmm. And I'm like, great. <laughs> I got a 274 guy, yeah. and I got a guy at 26. <laughs> like this is, but uh, the funny thing is, is, Isaac would eat more than Tyson. Isaac's like, can I get some more? Can I get some more? You know, and uh, we used to make jokes about it. The guy's like an endless pit. Whereas Tyson was, he, he didn't eat a whole lot. But um, you know, in the beginning of camp, I had to actually include like tons of vegetables, tons and tons of vegetables. He doesn't like to taste the vegetables. So I'd cook it in a way where he couldn't really taste it. But a lot of the, a lot of the meals included, I mean, mostly veg and he would still lose very slowly. But by the end of camp, Ariel, I could not feed him enough and he'd still lose weight. I remember there was one night that I, I fed him a pound of, uh, of uh, beef. It was a, a, a lean beef, but it was a pound of beef. And I'm like, okay, we're he's gonna he's you know he's gonna obviously be heavier tomorrow. And he lost like a, a pound and a half overnight. And I'm like, God Almighty, like wow. I gotta get this guy. So his metabolism definitely increased over the the course of the camp, which is a good sign. Which means his his body became more proficient at um, you know basically processing things. And you know, but uh, no, it was if I've ever been in a perfect camp, that was it. You know, it's it's interesting because after the weigh-ins on Friday, you got all these people freaking out. What? 273? What's going on? He didn't take it seriously. Bet on Wilder. Bet on Wilder. Do you go back to your 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 home, wherever you're staying, the team, and even in your own thoughts on Friday and just laugh at all of this? Like all these people, talk, you, like you, you have this down to a science and everyone... And, and you were expected like this wasn't a shock, right, for you guys. He said he wanted to come in at around that weight as well. And everyone's using what you guys consider to be success as, oh, this is the reason why he's going to lose. Like, you just laugh at that on Friday night? Yeah, no, you know, it's, <laughs> I, I used to take a lot of stuff to heart. I still do, Ariel. Like, we, you know, people, they, you know, they say things, you know, uh, oh, like, what what the heck, Lockhart? Like like you came in and he's heavy. Like what what did you do? Like what is this? What is that? When you know I, you, you're up at five thirty every morning and you go to bed at ten thirty every night. Like every single day, seven days a week for eight weeks straight. It's it's a grind. You know you're working. Like a lot of people, are like ah oh, man, I had a rough week. I worked sixty hours or forty hours. Like these are a hundred and twenty hour work weeks, and you're looking and like oh man, like people don't understand that. 
the amount of energy and work that went into this, and it came in perfect. Um, the problem is, is they look at that number on the scale, but when you look at it, like I wish we would have took a before and after picture, but the before at 275 and the after at 275, what we did was absolutely amazing. Like it just, his performance went up, you know, we held on to muscle, we lost body fat. And if you ask any nutritionist or dietitian or anybody that knows anything about food, it's impossible to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. You either anabolic or catabolic. And what he did during this camp is he held on to just about every ounce of muscle that he possibly could have. And he lost a, a considerable amount of body fat. And, you know, you know, I did my part, you know, my small part uh, for the fight. And, um, you know, I was, I was happy, you know, obviously watching him. It was, it was a, a great conclusion. I would imagine you're going to continue to work with him. Is that the plan? Absolutely. So the cool thing is, is, uh, you know, everything that he did was for performance. Uh, I worked, it was funny because his brothers were out there, his brother, he has, he has a brother, Huey. And he's like, George, you know, like, you know, can I lose some weight? And I'm like, all right, man, we, we talking about performance, talking about aesthetics. And he's like, you know, I do, I honestly, he's like, I just want to look better. I'm like, done deal. So he was uh 285 at the beginning of the camp. And it was funny because like, I didn't start working with him. Like we didn't have this conversation until about two weeks after and the reason being is because he started seeing a difference with Tyson. And he's like, hey, George, uh, you know, can we? Uh, and I'm like, absolutely, brother. Uh, so he went from 285 to 235 by the end of camp. So that was a six-week time period. And if you look at – it was funny because if you watch Huey, his brother, in the last fights, like they, they showed like uh, past fight uh, clips and stuff like that. When Huey was walking out with his brother, uh, you see a massive – difference between the physique I, you know i saw him like oh my god it looks like a completely different person and the same thing with his brother shane his brother shane um i think he lost like three or four stone which is funny to say uh ariel because you know with ireland you know i get the kilograms <laughs> obviously america with the pounds and i showed up and they were like um i'm you know 18 stone i'm like Goodness gracious, like, like, good, <laughs> good God, like the stone, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I had, I had no idea, man. I, it was, it was, it was definitely a difference of, uh, uh, a, you know, a, I guess measurement. That's amazing. Well, I'm happy for you, George. Uh, it's great to see good people doing well. And uh, I would imagine the, uh, the Mike Dolce fight is off. This is not happening in conclusion. Never materialized, right? <laughs> No, no, man. You know, he just, you know, he, he asked uh, bare knuckle boxing for, for $500,000, which obviously he knew was not going to ever happen. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost a dime for me to fight that guy. You know, he's, uh, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. You know, he is what he is and uh, I am who I am. You know, I'll just continue to keep being successful and caring about people that I work for. And uh, he can continue about, you know, loving himself, I guess. But, um, yeah, like I said, it is what it is. All right. We will leave it at that. Congratulations to you and the team on what you guys did on Saturday. Uh, great to see you a part of his team. I, I thought that that was an amazing little connection to our world of mixed martial arts. And I'm glad to see that you're expanding into the world of boxing as well. That's, that's, that's great to see. So thank you for the time, as always, George. And, again, congrats. Thanks, brother. Hey, one, one thing real quick. So, you know, everybody knows it's Lockhart and Leith, my, my, uh, my brother, Dan Leith. He just uh, he just opened a, a gym in Livonia, um, in, in Michigan, and uh, you know he's he's one of the best people I know. Obviously, my best friend. So I just want to say, anybody that's out in Livonia, uh, out by uh, Detroit or whatever like that, if they if they want to you know go to a, a Gracie Baja gym, they, they're looking for a place to train. Make sure that they freaking look him up, man. And uh, Ariel, it's always an honor, man. I really appreciate you having me on. Thanks again for everything, brother. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.